The techniques presented in this video are only a suggestion. They're not the only way of making something in Nuke. Compositing in a node-based software is very flexible, so there are always several ways of making the same result. If you don't like my techniques and you think they are incorrect, well, they're not. They're just another way of doing the same thing. Hello everyone, my name is Zuc Guerra and welcome to another edition of Hugo's Desk. Today we have episode 3, you just have to be better at rebuilding V-Ray shaders with raw passes. Timer starts now, 5 minutes. Now today we will be using one shot from the Rival Kingdoms trailer that I directed and art directed for Fired Out Smoke. Uh, if you go to my website, you can see the actual trailer, uh, which also you can find at the Fired Out Smoke's website as well, so you can see the full film. And also uh, for your enjoyment, there is also a full visual effects breakdown on my website as well, and also at Fired Out Smoke's website, so that you can see how we actually did uh, these shots. So here we have the raw passes from the Rival Kingdoms project. It's a statue render. And we start with the basically the raw GI, which is the GI lighting of the scene. Then we have the raw lighting. We also have the raw reflection. We also have the reflection filter. Um, and we also have the uh, speculars and the subsurface scattering pass. And also, of course, the diffuse. Now, these are the standard materials from V-Ray. Of course, we are rendering them as raw passes, so we're not using the standard lighting or standard GI. The purpose of this tutorial is first to rebuild a complete match from the actual uh, render, which is the beauty uh, out of uh, uh, V-Ray, and have a full match in composite so that you can tweak the color correction on a shader level. As you can see, this is the full render, which has all the passes merged them by themselves inside of Maya. So we start with using the diffuse because that's the material only with no lighting and no shading. Uh, now we need to of course unpremultiply the diffuse so that we don't have any effect whatsoever on the edges. Once we do that, we can bring in then the lighting which is the directional lighting and then the GI which is the global illumination lighting pass uh, that corresponds to the global lighting of the scene. Once we unpremult them all, there is uh, only two types of operation that you can do when you rebuild CG. You either do a multiply operation or you do a plus operation. There's no other type of operation. I do, I do know that some people might use a screen operation as well. And it is possible to use a screen for reflections, but it is not correct. It is not physically accurate to match the scene using a screen operation. You should always use a multiply when handling with raw passes and a plus when and handling normal passes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply our raw diffuse by our raw lighting. That will give us the total lighting, the lighting. And then uh, we multiply the raw GI by the diffuse as well, and that will give us the normal GI. Now, if we plus together the normal GI with the normal lighting, we get the total lighting, which is also a pass that you can have in V-Ray. And this will give us all the lighting in the scene, both the directional and also the undirectional light of the shot. And of course, now because they're separated, you have total control and color correction to work on a shader level. Now, next up, of course, is the reflection. Now, the reflection, you can either have just the reflection or like we did here, we have the raw reflection and the reflection filter. The same way, we ref we basically multiply the raw reflections, which is all the reflective materials, by its mask, which is a reflection filter. Once we do that, we can then plus them together to the main stream, and that will bring in all the reflections into the shot. Next up, of course, will be the speculars and the subsurface scattering. We have no control over raw on those passes, so we're going to just basically plus both of them together. Uh, we're going to plus the specular uh, on top of the whole thing. Of course, don't forget to pre-multiply the alpha channel. And, of course, we're going to plus the subsurface scattering. Uh, and, of course, don't forget to do the unpremultiplication as well. Now, there is no specific order if you're going to plus passes together. They're going to be plus at any uh, order possible. But I do like to work on a shader uh, build level. So I always start with my diffuse, then I go into my lighting, then I go to my reflections, then I go to my speculars, which are nothing more than reflections, and then I finally go to my subsurface scattering or refractions if they were any. In this case, on this render, there is no refractions. Also, there is no self-illumination materials either. So if you had a self-illumination material or if you had a refraction, you could have just plus them together on top of your render and the result would always match the uh, RGB. 
Now, if you look closely here, if we look at the rebuild uh, shader we've made and the RGB, it doesn't really match. Uh, the only thing that is missing is the alpha channel because we haven't cut it by its alpha. Now, the only thing we need to do is we need to put a copy node and then just bring an alpha channel from the closest alpha channel we can find. In this case, is the subsurface scattering. And if we just put a pre molt we'll see a total pre-multiplication of the correct alpha channel. Now, be careful not to just put a pre-mult because once you start plussing all these merge togethers, because they are merging the alpha as well, unless you tell them not to, you will get an alpha channel that has a value of 5 and not a value of 1. And that is always a problem that you actually contaminate your edges with the wrong alpha channel. So that's why we are copying in the final alpha channel into the image. Now, as you can see on the final shot, we took advantage of all the actual passes and rebuilding so that we didn't have to do extreme changes in 3D because we had very limited budget for re-rendering. So as you can see here, uh, of course, I did split the lighting, so we got all the lights separate, but it's the same as having uh, all the lights together like you just saw. But I did use a rebuilding shader on all these shots so that we could have a faster workflow in compositing. Now, I do know that normally on a big company, it's more common to just do these things in 3D, but on a smaller company, it's much more practical to have the shaders so that you don't have to re-render every single thing you need to do. And this is the final shot from the Rival Kingdoms trailer that you just saw the rebuild on. I am sharing uh, just one frame of this uh, shot so that you can actually uh, learn and actually use this tutorial with an actual image. If you want to take this one step further, you can build a gizmo like I did, which rebuilds the entire shader process uh, from V-Ray. So for example, in here, you see this is my uh, ready-to-go shader that basically puts all the passes together. And of course, in here, I do have refraction as well because I usually have a refraction pass. But if you don't have it, you can just take it away. And time is up. So next week, yet another, you just have to be better at something. Please subscribe, like, share, and leave me a comment. If you did not like this video, well, you can just leave. You know, there's just, just leave. Thank you so much for watching.